Dr. Mindy Hare, and I want to talk to you today about your hunger hormone. So in my Resetter group last week, we did a ton of fasting, and what was really interesting was to see how some people just clicked into fasting, it wasn't hard, they weren't hungry, and some people really struggled. And it, most of the people that struggled were the ones that it was brand new. So what I want to show you today is that you can use fasting as a tool to really bring your hunger hormone down. And if you're not familiar with your hunger hormone, you actually have a hormone. It's called uh, ghrelin, and it, it will stimulate to your brain. It will say, hey, it's time to eat. And there was a really cool study done uh, by Dr. Jason Fung. He's one of the fasting experts right now. You can go to his website, go to YouTube. He's got some cool videos out there. Um, he did some studies that showed that somebody who eats three times a day will typically have three times in their day where this hunger hormone will go up. So believe it or not, I drew, I drew this chart for you so you can see I'm a visual learner, so I like to teach visually. Um, but believe it or not, the hunger hormone starts off in the morning at, as at the highest. So you, what he found is that people would have a high level of the hunger hormone, and then as the morning went on, this hormone would start to come down. So one of the things, by the way, that happens when people eat is the hunger hormone comes down as well. This is why you're not as hungry, but it, it would have a peak in the morning, and if they ate, then it would come down, and then over time, what would end up happening is that it would come go back up. So the second peak was at, at, uh, at lunchtime, around 12, which is why we all run off to lunch. Then the hunger hormone would come down, and then it would go up around dinner time. So this is why we are pr programmed to eat uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, that was a typical, the typical three meal a day person had trained their hunger hormone to peak at those times. Now the person that was eating six meals a day, because I get this from you guys a lot where you're like, well, I thought we were supposed to eat all day long. Well, guess what? The person that ate six meals a day actually trained their hunger hormone to go up more. So they started the morning off with more of a hunger hormone. Their, instead of going down at 10 o'clock, the person that was eating all day long, their hunger hormone would go up at 10 o'clock. It would start to dip around 12 and then go up at one or two. And it would be up and down throughout the afternoon and it was at its highest at night. Because the person that's eating all day long trains their hunger hormone to keep getting released when the stomach goes empty. So here's where fasting comes in. The person that fasts, you would think if you took food away from the equation that you would just get hungry and you would stay hungry. Well, the exact opposite happens. When you fast, what ends up happening is that over time your hunger hormone goes down you might get a little bit of a, of a dip around uh, uh, lunchtime or what you perceive as lunchtime, but then all the way through into the afternoon into the, uh, and well into dinner, your hunger hormone stays low. So the whole point in telling you this, if you want to stop being hungry, you have to fast. That seems so counterintuitive, but I can't tell you that, you, that when you look at your food, you should look at your food as a tool to manipulate your hormones. So whether it's uh, insulin or progesterone, but in this case, when you start fasting, you manipulate your hunger hormone. And in the beginning, <clears throat> if you have been doing this style of eating, what ends up happening is that you're just hungry. You're like, this fasting thing sucks. But if you hang in there and you practice intermittent fasting and you do dinner to dinner fasting and you try the fast mimicking, you do the block fasting, over time, the more you fast, the more this hunger hormone comes down and it becomes effortless. So I see this all the time with my patients. They, um, it's very common when I start coaching a patient for them to, to just tell me in that first visit, you know what, I'm super nervous about fasting and I would say 100% of the time, once we start to get their body fat adapted, we get them some ketogenic living, we get them fasting more, they come back and they go, it's so weird, I'm not hungry. Well, that's because we've manipulated the, the fasting hormone. So 
for those of you that are trying fasting, you're struggling, um, just hang in there. If you want more tools on fasting, you can join my Resetter group. We fast once a month together. There's incredible support in there. Just, just put Resetters in the uh, comment section and I'll send you a link. For those of you that are trying to lose weight, really the major way that you lose weight is you have to fast more. So I did go back and look at my vi uh, video I did on lowering insulin. When you lower the, the hormone insulin, you actually can access fat stores. So we're, we're hormonally based and fasting has an amazing way of tapping into it. So hope that helps. If you're a resetter and you've had great luck with fasting and it, having it kill your hunger, please put comments in the comment section so that other people can see the journey that you've been on. And as always, you know, just share it out. I'd love for people to get this information so that we can start getting people out of insulin resistance. Fasting is truly the best way to do it. So hope that helps. Have an awesome day.